Hello world, my name is Mimi and today you are watching I want to talk about two questions that people mostly ask me in person and on Facebook and these questions are one why did I come to Spain and two how did I come to Spain I didn't walk I flew anyway so I'm going to answer it and talk about it today and importantly for those of you who write to me mostly uh, asking for help uh, to come to Spain or Europe. There is no other help I can give you apart from the method I use which worked for me and I think it should work for everybody if you are prepared and you have the requirements that it takes to be here. Okay, so I will start from one. Why Spain? Well, Spain wasn't the ideal country I wanted to come to. It wasn't really on my mind. I was planning uh, of going to Denmark and that was because a friend from Denmark puts the idea in my mind why did I even try or start to think about leaving Ghana okay so let's rewind and go back to the genesis of the story At the time I started to uh, think about traveling, I was working on my own. I was managing my own business, a spa business in the Royal Register Hotel in East Legon. the capital city of Ghana so for those of you who didn't know Accra is the capital city of Ghana so I was doing this business I had workers and everything was fine what wasn't fine was the fact that I was paying a very high rent for the place because it was a hotel it was a three-star hotel so it was really expensive and if you're very familiar with Ghana or you're Ghanaian, you know the silly thing in Ghana or Africa that we charge in foreign currency, which is stupid because there is no system in the country. So anyone does anything, nothing is being controlled. And this is what makes life very difficult for the average African or average Ghanaian uh, citizen. And this was what was affecting me. I was paying in dollars. I was a young woman in my mid-twenties. I was working my ass to make a living for myself. I was supporting my family and I was paying a rent in dollars. What the hell? How many people will be able to survive in such environment if there are no rules, no system to control stuff like this? And this is what sent me out because it was really too much. I was paying $1,450 per month. Okay, so that is my name up there, my full name. The spa's name, the name of the spa was Blue Spa. And the what I was paying for, spa house and equipment rental. And then the name of the hotel, Royal Register. You can see the date here. And then you can see how much I was paying 1450 US dollars. That was what I was paying. And when you convert it into cities, it was 3480 cities. That is a lot of money. Thank God, down there you can see the rate. It was two um cities 40 pesos at a time now i'm sure it's close to four um cities and that is a lot of money even thousand cities is still a whole lot of money so you can imagine i was stupid you know but per my calculation if everything went on like i planned 
clients coming from my side and clients coming from the hotel, that would be no problem at all because I was making a lot of income at the end of the day. I was making a lot. By the end of the day, I used all to pay for my rent. No year per month for... It was a whole um, basement, a spa basement. It was already built as a spa, but the hotel couldn't manage it, so they were just looking out for someone to rent the place out to. And I was paying that amount. Why I was paying that amount? Because it included electricity and water, which at the time, Ghana wasn't supplying almost anybody with water or electricity. We didn't have electricity at all. It goes off like 24 to 48 hours. And in my line of profession, I need water. I need electricity like 24 seven. So that was the more reason why I opted for that hotel. Yeah, so somebody will ask, why don't you just rent a place of your own or a house and then uh, have your business? The more reason why I chose that hotel was one, apart from the fact that it was a luxurious place, it was very beautiful, but in all that, the spa was already built, is that they are providing water and electricity. And I was targeting to get their clients. So um, the place, the location was one, um, the water and electricity were two, and three, targeting their clients coming to my spa since it's part of the hotel. But unfortunately for me, that wasn't really happening. So most of the clients are clients coming from my marketing strategy or client that I already had because at the time I had about two years of experience. So I had a lot of clients. So I was highly recommended by clients that knew me. Now that wasn't really paying off because I was paying high and I was really paying in a higher currency. So I was like, okay, I'm going to close my business down because I'm being fucked up by the government and uh, uh, I'm just tired and I want to leave the country. That was all that was on my mind because apart from the shit that was happening at work, when you get back home, everything in your fridge has defrozen and it's rotten so you're throwing food away every time because I was busily working and I had to cook over the weekend, um, save the food in the fridge. And when you come back home, because the light has been off for a long period of time, you realize that everything is not edible. You just have to throw everything away from ice creams that I love so much to food, to uncooked food, to everything. You just have to, so it was unbearable. And at the time, the country was very boring because people were really not making means. There was no power. It comes sometimes one hour and goes off, sometimes 30 minutes you have power and then it's off for the whole day. So everything was dull in Ghana at the time and it was affecting everybody. People were very depressed, especially business men who had invested a lot into their business and needed electricity to work. They were not functioning well. They were, everybody was affected. So that was affecting me. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to close my business and I will travel. Before then, I had spoken to a friend and he was like, ah, oh, you can come and visit me in Denmark and then get to know here. And if you like it, then you work towards staying here. I'm like, wow, that's cool. That's a good opportunity coming at the right time. So... I basically at the end of the day closed my business uh, down, settled my workers. I was having about four workers at the time and I was working really more than everybody. And that's one thing about small businesses. When you have a small business, you tend to work like a slave more than any other person. At the end of the day, you have to pay them because they are working. But you have to do a lot of the job because you want a lot of income to come in. 
and you don't want to lose you you're on the target so that was what i was doing and then it wasn't really working i was earning a lot if i wasn't paying um that much for rent i would have said that was it was really good I was earning like six to seven thousand cities a month and in euro it would be like um 2000 which was really really good at the time which was really really good for any Ghanaian to be having that but at the end of the day i pay workers and then i pay my super high rent and i don't have anything to say and i wasn't even paying myself and that's one advice when you're working for yourself try to pay yourself no matter how small it is try to keep something for yourself now I finally closed down my business and uh, started working out to travel. I contacted my friend and oof, I couldn't reach him. So this was just a friend who wanted to help me so there was no obligation. So in the midst of my worries and depression at the time, I was at home and I was um, working from home because I had a car so I just put my massage table in the car do a lot of advertisements and a lot of my clients I explain things to them so some of them were comfortable with me coming to their homes some were not so I lost them those who were comfortable I was going to them and I was still having clients from other hotels going to other hotels to work on them so it was okay my finance was okay still even though I wasn't uh, running my business uh, from the office or from a location, it was still okay. So I was depressed at the time. And then a friend of mine called me and was like, uh, what about France, Italy, and Spain? I'm like, what about them? It's like, I think they have a good weather and uh, from where you're coming from, it's not so cold. I think it's good two the people are lovely and three the food doesn't differ much from your food in ghana so you wouldn't have much problem relocating i'm like hmm okay i love uh spanish music i love dancing salsa so spain was the first thing that came in mind i'm like okay i'm giving it a shot so I didn't contact any traveling agent. It was all by myself. I did everything by myself. Now, for those of you asking for help and blah, 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 I did everything by myself and you can do it by yourself. And at the time I was doing it, there were only four persons who knew. Two of them wrote a recommendation letter for me, attached all the documents I had for the embassy uh, to be able to acquire my visa. One of them took me to a hospital for a general checkup because you need a general checkup and test and everything. So she was the one who helped me because it was an emergency. I needed it as, I needed it as quick as possible. And she knew some doctors there, so she helped me. And the fourth person who knew was a guy I was going out with, of course, and he was the one who brought the Spain, France idea. So, of course, he knew four persons. No other person knew. I was going to the embassy all by myself. Uh, how I got information? I got them on Google and YouTube. So, I mean, they could give you a lot of information. And also because I had a lot of foreign friends, so... I could talk to them, ask them about um, visa processing and uh, everything. I was reading a lot about Spain. Initially, I wanted to go to Madrid and then a friend of mine was like, hell no, Madrid is a bit boring. You should come to Barcelona. They have beaches. It's lively. It's an international city. So, okay, I opted for Spain. Uh, I opted for Barcelona and then I applied uh, for the visa. But you need a reason, you need a purpose. You can't just travel. What am I going to tell the embassy? What is the reason for traveling? Mm -hmm. So I have to uh, decide on something. Either come as a tourist. Tourist, black tourist, hell no. I wanted something beneficial because you all know how much it is to spend 
uh, or to convert our money into euros or dollars. So I wasn't going to just throw my money away. I decided to uh, take a Spanish course and then come back with at least one or two words, one or two Spanish words. So I opted for a Spanish school. I did research for about two months to three months and I finally opted for one school. They were very attentive. They were always on phone or re responding to my emails. So uh, I told them and I'm like, I want to take a course for uh, four months. And then they were explaining to me, if you come for four months, the fees and blah, 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 blah. And I opted for six months later and they were like, six months we will advise you to opt for seven or eight months that way when you come and you like the country you want to stay it's easy for you to prolong your visa in spain but if it takes six months you have to go back to your country reapply before coming back i'm like i'm not doing that shit. so i am opting for one year so i opted for it one year fees was paid and this school is very good i highly recommend the school i'm going to uh, leave their website below and i'm an agent for this school so if you need any help you can contact me and i'll help you with that now they sent me all the documents that i needed i've been admitted into the school and everything uh, the DHL it to me it was express and I had all the documents gathered all the documents I needed in Ghana then I sent it to the embassy apply for the visa and it was a bit scary I'm a nervous and emotional person at the same time so in all I got uh, my visa a day before my flight and I had already purchased the flight ticket so it was a very very high risk I was just I was just in the mood of traveling out so it was like go for it I just went for it I bought the ticket applied and did everything and I was just waiting for them and they will call me and demand for another document or um, uh, legalization of a document and I have to go for it, go and legalize it. It involves a lot. I was walking there to and fro and I'm like, I'm going to do this. And I was doing all this alone. Nobody knew it was only me, Google, YouTube and asking questions from people who could give me the right answers so you can do it on your own you just need information and if you need more from my experience you could just ask me and i will tell you if i know anything about it especially concerning spain so finally i got um the visa and what really helped me I know there was so much grace, there was a miracle, I was blessed, but I really, really worked towards it and I deserve it. But another thing that really helped me was my friends. I had two clients who uh, were friends to me, very good friends. They were platonic friends. So this is what you should know that as a lady, you shouldn't sleep around with just any guy who comes on your way. Make some of them your very good friends uh, platonic friends so you can talk to them all the time they can be of help to you but when you involve sexual activities or any kind of relationships then emotions get involved and when the time arrives for them to help you uh, it doesn't really work out so my relationship with these people was a bit uh, business and very platonic I was going out with them for dinner and stuff but we were just friends and they really like my entrepreneurial spirit so when i told them uh this is the mission and the reason i had to close my business they were sad but they really supported me and understood and thought that the best for me was to leave the country because they all felt i could do better outside with the energy that i have so they wrote a recommendation letter with a stamp from their office and they were in a very high uh, rank offices in Ghana, so it's really helped. I'm sure the uh, consonant in Ghana was like, mm, Who is this girl? Who is this lady? Because 
they were coming from a very uh, high office rank and um, I was uh, luckily um, offered the visa with no questions. Uh, Spanish embassy doesn't interview you. It's just documents and you go there and uh, when you get your visa, they call you and you get it. So I got the visa and uh, I came to Spain. I so basically I was tired in my country really it was here it was at a point that like you you just want to vanish you, you just want to vanish and so I came here for that and the next reason why I came to Spain or um why I'm here is because of the language the love for the language I love Spanish language and that is what kept me so I came, I fell in love with the people, uh, I wouldn't say the country because I haven't been to every part of Spain, but so far I love every part I've been to. I love the people, they are very warm, they are very nice, and I love the food. If you know me, you know I love food, I cannot live without food, so <laughs> I love the food. And I decided to prolong and stay here try to build a life here build a finance here and uh, travel europe and some parts of the world and question is will i ever go back to ghana of course home is home it's it's where uh, my soul is but spain is always going to be my second home and um, uh, i have my family back in ghana and uh, even though they love to travel, uh, home is still home, so we're gonna go back home. So I'll go back home, but not any time soon, like going back to stay in Ghana, not any time soon. So now you know the reason why I came, what brought me to Spain and how I came to Spain. It sounds a bit funny when people ask me how I came to Spain, it's like, walk or fly or yeah i came by flying <laughs> so thank you very much for watching if you have any story you want to share i will do another video of my experience here in spain how it feels like living here as an african or as a black no i'm not black i'm brown as a brown woman living in spain and how it is but one thing that i have experienced so far in spain is there is no racism i love it they are very nice and they are very very helpful uh so until the next video subscribe and share this video with your friends